God, who alone gives life to our days, day and the darkness have into be to those who lift in his way. May thy father, the sons of God, who live the valley of praying, praise the Lord of the that we bring glory to grace to our God long gives light to our day any other blessings we go to those who blessed in his way we through rehearsing no <laughs> Good morning, church. And we are church. We are the, the body of Christ. And within that body, we are also members of the Knights of Columbus. And we have been commissioned by our founder, Blessed Michael J. McGivney, to exhibit the charity, the love, the service to the poor, to the disenfranchised, to those in need. That is our mission in order to bring the body to completion. So as we gather this morning, we gather with the spirit of our Savior Jesus Christ and that of our founder and guided with our new leadership uh, for this coming year by calling to God in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the fellowship, that communio, communion of the Holy Spirit, be with all of you. So let us now just pause for a few moments. Call to mind the infinite number of gifts and blessings that we have received from God. Blessings not so much for us, but for us to use to continue to bring God's church to completion. Now we ask God to forgive us from the times when we have not used these gifts as they have been given to us. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Certainly to forgive us of our sins, but bring all of us to that promise of everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty God, draw close to us your servants and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness that those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created to keep safe what you have restored. And we pray this confidently through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. The priest and the prophets said to the princes and all the people, this man deserves death. He has prophesied against this city, as you have heard with your own ears. Jeremiah gave this answer to the princes and all the people. It was the Lord who sent me to prophesy against this house and city all that you have heard. Now, therefore, reform your ways and your deeds. 
Listen to the voice of the Lord your God, so that the Lord will repent of evil which threatens you. As for me, I am in your hands. Do with me what you think good and right. But mark well, if you put me to death, it is innocent blood you bring on yourselves, on this city and its citizens. For in truth, it was the Lord who sent me to you to speak all the things for you to hear. Thereupon the princes and all the people said to the priest and the prophets, this man does not deserve death. It is in the name of the Lord our God that he speaks to us. So Iacham, the son of Zephon, protected Jeremiah so that he was not handed over to the people to be put to death. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, Lord, in your great love, answer me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Rescue me out of my mire, may I not sink. May I be rescued from my foes and from the watery depths. Let not the flood waters overwhelm me, nor the abyss swallow me up, nor the pit close its mouth over me. Lord, Lord in your great love, answer me. But I am afflicted and in pain. Let your saving help, O God, protect me. I will praise you, the name of God in song, and I will glorify him with thanksgiving. Lord, Lord in your great love, answer me. See you lowly ones and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts revive. May the Lord hear the poor, and his own who are in bonds he spurns not. Lord, in your great love, answer me. May the Lord be with you. Let us now listen to the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Herod the Tetrarch heard of the reputation of Jesus and said to his servants, this man is John the Baptist. He has been raised from the dead. That is why such mighty powers are at work in him. Now Herod had Jesus arrest John, bound him and put him in prison on account of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip. For John had said to him, it is unlawful for you to marry your brother's wife. Although he wanted to kill him, he feared the people, for they regarded John as a prophet. But at a birthday celebration for Herod, the daughter of Herodias performed a dance for the guest. She delighted Herod so much that Herod swore to give her whatever she might ask for. Prompted by her mother, she said, Give me the head on a platter of John the Baptist. The king was very disturbed, but because of his oath and the guests who were present, he ordered that it be given, and he had John beheaded in the prison. His head was brought in on a platter and given to the girl, who then took it to her mother. His disciples came and 
took away the corpse, buried John, and they went to tell Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our gospel this morning is, is very dark. It's filled with evil. Actually incredible that another human being would treat another person like that. The beheading. But evil acts, and that's, that's pure sin, can be traced all the way back to the very beginning of humanity. It's been with us all these hundreds and thousands, perhaps uh, millions of years. And this is an occasion, though, of joy. The more I read this homily and uh, gospel and preparing for the homily, I suddenly was blessed and all of a sudden I begin to see the power of God working in me, the Spirit. Father, this reading is perfect for this joyous occasion. I'll try to explain that. Now, as I said, evil has always been with us. We've got the example of Herod slaughtering the babies. But we still slaughter babies today. Nothing has changed. Moms and dads reach into the womb of the mother and yank this child out from within the womb and slaughter it. That's probably even more horrendous than the acts of Herod. We can stay to really just recent times within our lives. Uh, most of us probably remember way back in the mid, mid 80s, the slaughter at San Cedro, California. There was a man at a breakfast diner. He ordered pancakes. The pancakes came out cold. He was upset. Reaches into his pocket pulls out a gun and kills 40 of the people there eating breakfast. Such pure evil. This is a child of God. We can even get more recent, back in 20, uh, 2018, we have uh, an expelled high school student from Parkland, uh, Florida goes into his high school, uh, high school is named Douglas, and he slaughters 17 of his classmates and two teachers. That's pure evil. And just a few months ago, in May, at uh, Uvaldo, uh, Texas, we have a, a man walking into an elementary school, Rob Elementary School, and slaughter 20 innocent children who are all curled up in the corner crying for their moms and dads. Two teachers were killed. We kid ourselves if we don't think that this evil will continue. Revelations, it's kind of the book of the martyrs, tells us that this kind of pure evil will exist until the end time. Makes no sense, does it? No sense at all. Why does it happen? What can we do about it? Jesus came into the world, became human, to do battle with evil, to destroy it. And Jesus went face to face with evil. 
evil in the world even crucified him, which is probably the most horrendous evil act that's ever been uh, committed to a human. They crucified him. But before Jesus died, realizing that his work of building up God's kingdom in our midst, he gave birth to his church. And he left the mission that he begun to be completed by his church, to be the body of Christ, the living Christ in our midst, in the midst of evil and sin. To be Christ in the world now, to be Christ in the world 2,000 years ago, to be Christ in the world 2,000 years from now, is to be a living sign, a witness of the compassion of God, the forgiveness of God, the charity and love of God and the service that Jesus provided to the poor and to the homeless and to the disenfranchised. Jesus reached out and embraced all that was not or was evil in this world that we live in. And his work was finished he commissioned his church, those that would follow him. We are part of that church. We are his disciples today. And our commission is to be the body of Christ. And I think this was the, the vision that blessed uh, Michael J. McGintney had in the beginning, way back in was it, 1884 when the uh, council was... Uh, you know, found, given birth to, and it was to address the, the poverty and the hurt and the pain and the evil of immigrants coming into this country and the way they were treated. And it was the hopes of Father McGivney to develop a fraternal organization to be present through our acts of charity and also charity that brings us service. And as knights, we have performed, we have faithfully fulfilled that mission. The knights have a history of contributing not just millions and millions and millions of dollars over the years, but just raw service, pure presence to the poor and the needy to be of service to them. And that's what today is about. We continue that work, which we will be guided and directed by our, our new council, led by Dave Vandalin as our new Grand Knight. And we come in the presence of this Mass to pray for them. Pope Francis, well, he's in Canada right now, talking to the indigenous uh, natives who went under tremendous torture from the people of Canada, slavery, said the only way to attack evil is to be a source of love. And in love, you bring joy. So hence, when we are faithful to building up the kingdom, we are men and, and women of joy. We need to speak about it more often. We need to be aware of who we are as Christians and disciples. Because I get the distinct feeling, and perhaps you do too, that not enough of us believe what it, or even understands what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Our world, our world today is still very dark. The church is very quiet. Let's make a difference, okay? Amen. Amen. And I wish to thank our new leadership for uh, accepting their role in continuing the mission of Jesus Christ and of um, Blessed uh, 
Michael J. McGinty. God bless. It's only through the gift of faith, as I so often preach, that we dare the place, the name of Jesus on our lips. Let us, as church, proudly call out the name of Jesus, for he is with us as we pray that he hears our prayers. Let us first pray for children not yet born into this world. Let us pray that they will be given the chance to be a son of God, a daughter of God, and continue to build up God's promise in our church and our world today. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Let us pray for our, our government, which is quite divided. In fact, it's very divided. Let us pray that we may bring Christ, without Christ within our lives, our community, and within our government, there will never be peace or joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Let us pray for our knights who have died during the last year, their spouses who have died. Let us pray that in God's mercy and love, their sins have been forgiven, and they now share in the light of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. What else shall we pray for today? Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the 20 or 30 or so people in Kentucky who have been drowned in their entire livelihood, um, washed away by the floods. Let us pray, not for despair, but for hope, because the church is alive and in their midst, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our Almighty God, your son, Jesus, has heard our prayers we have lifted them up to him, knowing that he will present them to you. Hear our prayers and answer them according to your will. For we always pray in your name, in the name of the Son and through the Spirit, they who liveth here forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for it is through your goodness that we have this bread to offer you, fruit of the earth, the work of human hands. Let it become for us our spiritual food. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for it is through your goodness that we have this wine to offer you. Fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, let it become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. 
So let us now pray that these are very simple gifts of bread and wine may still be an acceptable offering to God our Father. We pray to the Lord. Lord, please accept the sacrament from your hands for the praise and glory of your name for our good and the good of all his holy church. O oh Lord, be pleased to accept the offerings of your church. For in your mercy, you have given us to be offered. And by your power, you have transformed us into the mystery of our salvation. We pray this through Christ our Lord. So may the Lord be with you. And let us lift up our hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, it is just, it is our duty, it is for our salvation, always, everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord God Almighty and Eternal Father. For in Jesus' death, we come to celebrate it in love. In his resurrection, we confess it with a living faith. And in his coming again in glory, we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. O Lord, you are holy indeed, for you are the very fount of all that is holy. So we pray, make holy, therefore, these gifts. Send down your spirit upon them like the dewfall. Let them become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Do this in memory of me. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples, saying, Now take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Now do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. And we give you thanks for counting us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that by partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And Lord, we pray that you remember your church throughout the world, that you bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with Edward, our Bishop, with all the clergy, the religious, and your faithful disciples. Remember to our sisters, and remember our brothers, remember all who have died with the hope of the resurrection. We remember to those who have died in your mercy, and we ask that you welcome them into the light of your face. And Lord, have mercy on all of us, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we then be merit to co-heir of eternal life, and may we merit to praise and glorify you through Christ Jesus, your Son. For it is through him, it is with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. It's time, time for us to gather up all of our praise and our prayers and petitions and we want to lift them high through Jesus to his Father in the very words that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven and hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven and give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, you said to the apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not then on our sins, but look upon the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. You. Let's be a sign of that peace now to one another. Thank you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. My brothers and my sisters, this is Jesus, the Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. And blessed are we who partake in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Body of Christ, Sue. Larry, the body of Christ. 
and Steve, the body of Christ. Let us pray. A company with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts and in your never failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So may the Lord be with you. Amen. Mighty now, God bless you and your families in the name of the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us go now in the peace and the love of God. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful day. Don't go anywhere, though. We have a ceremony. We have a hymn. song from high alone. Bring a new song into the Lord. Sing us hallelujah. Hallelujah. Very nice. Thank you.
that closer with Isaiah. You wanna? I will sit wherever you would like me to sit. I'm going to st stay there. You think so? <laughs>
emergency room, and finally inside and outside doors. Trustee, trustee, trustee. Oh, inside guard, outside guard. officers elect remember where you are and you now go up and sit in the nuts. You got it. This is being executed as, as, as well as the presidential inauguration. <laughs> Morning. Uh, I'm going to be performing a trilogy this morning just to give you a little information here. So I'm going to be acting or not acting as the past Grand Knight, as I was, as a district deputy, and also as a new officer uh, trustee. trustee member. So I put my first hat on right now as a past Grand Knight. Reverend Father, my brothers of the Our Lady of the Desert, Council 15704, ladies and gentlemen, the installation of the Council Officer Ceremony is always a solemn and a hopeful occasion. I offer my sincerest thank to my brothers who during the past fraternal year have given me the benefit of their prayers, advice, and the strength on their arms in our actions and the invaluable support of their confidence. You have demonstrated that a small group of people united in common cause can be powerful, force for good, and that by working together as a team, we can make the difference in our parishes, communities, and the world. On behalf of the officers who are retiring from their post, I extend our worthy successors or warmest congratulations assurance of continued cooperation, and a prayer for wishes for the most successful administration. Please stand. It is my pleasure to welcome and introduce you to our worthy district deputy of district number 29, Sir Knight Herbert, G. Cologne, and yours truly as the District Warden, Sir Knight Raymond Ogrill. To you, worthy District Deputy, I present this gavel uh, and ask that you proceed with the installation of officer ceremony. Please be seated. Reverend Father, my brothers and knights, ladies and gentlemen, I bring to you the greetings from Supreme Knight Patrick Kelly, the Supreme Officers and the Board of Directors of the Knights of Columbus, and our worthy State Deputy, Luigi Barada. Before we proceed with the important and pleasant task ahead, I will ask worthy Council Chaplain Reverend Peter Connolly to invoke a blessing on God upon 
or Air Force, or the chaplain. Please lead us in a prayer. Please stand. Let us begin as we should begin with all important events in our lives in calling to God in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. O oh, Heavenly Father, we, your children, are assembled here to invest the chosen offices of our council with the medals symbolic of the authority to lead and to minister our council in the days to come. Bestow upon us the grace to remember that as all duties, uh, duly appointed authority stems from you, so also does the wisdom to exercise that authority with justice and charity. Inspire us, therefore, to always consult with you in the important decision-making process. Imbue us with the strength to act always in the spirit of brotherly love and grant us the precious humility to acknowledge that every present possibility or error in human uh, deliberation. It's at the end. O oh, Heavenly Father, aid us to be the finest example of complete dedication to the practice of Christian principles, as was our founder blessed Michael J. McGivney, and to conduct ourselves at all times so as to reflect your holy will. In the spirit of blessed Michael J. McGivney, may our honor continue his work of caring for the needy and outcasts. Through the example of his life and virtue, may we follow your son, Jesus Christ, more closely, filling his commandment of charity and building up his body, which is the church with Our Lady of Guadalupe, under whose maternal protection our honor is consecrated. We make this prayer through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, worthy chaplain. Now will everyone continue standing and please join me in repeating the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Facing the flag of our country, placing your right hand over your heart. And if you were in the military, you may salute and say with me, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. To you retiring officers of this council, I offer my congratulations for our work well done and my gratitude to each of you for the devotion which you have uh, exemplified our principle of charity, unity, and fraternity, and patriotism. To you council officers who I am about to install, I express my confidence that you will add luster to our council good works, making them even more beneficial to the church and thereby enhancing our order's proud name. In the life of every man, there's raised many opportunities to take stock of his advancement, both in his spiritual and material sense, the repair of missions to correct errors and to plan for a brighter future. Likewise, in the life of the council, the commencement of each fraternal year provides a similar opportunity. It is time when an inventory must be taken, past achievements weighed and evaluated future plans conceived and appraised. These plans must always be considered in terms of how well they will enable your council to serve your parish, to strengthen your members, your families, in the faith of the benefit of their neighbors. Where the district one uh, warden, may I please have the list of officers to be installed? Now I ask our worthy chaplain to bless the medals of the office.
our Father in heaven, we ask you to bless these medals, symbolic of the offices to which these men have been called. We pray that you will bestow upon the men who wear these medals the wisdom to exercise the leadership and authority that these medals represent. May this council ever support the life of the church through our parish, and as a family-centered organization, may our members and their families work together to help build the common good as faithful citizens. May these medals always be worn with reverence, dignity, and grace. We ask this through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Thank you, worthy chaplain. As council chaplain, you are the heir to the great vision and legacy of our founder, blessed Michael J. McGivney, and the key figure in the structure of our council and the steward of his spirituality. The genius of blessed Michael J. McGivney was that he saw the great potential inherent in the respectful collaboration between the clergy and the lady, lady that lies in the heart of our order. More than ever before, your role as council chaplain is indispensable to the Catholic character of our order. I shall now present to you your chaplain's medal. Were the officers of Our Lady of the Desert, Council 15704. Were the officers, you have been chosen by your brothers to guide the dest destiny of your council during this fraternal year. Your brothers have demonstrated their confidence that you are capable of outstanding leadership. Prove that they were correct. Remember that it is through their cooperation that your past achievements have been made possible. Continue to merit that cooperation by measuring all your decisions in the light of what will be fair, just, and beneficial to them. Solicit their advice. Consider it careful, carefully. But remember always 
that the good of the order is the paramount. Under the leadership of your Grand Knight, the council officers must function as a united team, for so powerful is the light of unity that it can be illuminated the whole world. As your district deputy, I offer you this advice. Your council will be judged on its actions. Accordingly, as fraternal leaders, you should focus your energies on strengthening parish and family life and growing your council in the membership strength, insurance protection for our families, charitable outreach, and the fraternal activities. This will build a lasting legacy for your council in the spirit of the blessed Michael J. McGivney, our founder. Remember, your council's greater assets are the members and their unique gifts and talents. And now, confident that you will fulfill the duties of your respective offices to the best of your abilities, live is a good Catholic life, live as a good Catholic life, and serve as a model of a Catholic brotherhood, we shall proceed with the installation of council officers. It is my duty to extract from you several promises that given in the presence of our brothers, friends, and family will be binding as long as you remain in the office to which you have been elected. Worthy officers, please raise your right hand. Do you promise to obey the laws and rules of the order? Officers, answer, I do. I do. I do. do you promise to be a Catholic gentleman and to live your life through the practice of good works? Officers, answer, I do. I do. Do you promise that through your actions you will help build the domestic church, protect the sanctity of the family, to promote the respect of human dignity and religious liberty? Officers, answer, I do. I do. Do you promise to continue to form yourself in the knowledge of your holy religion, to foster priestly vocations, and to faithfully serve our church? Officers, answer, I do. Do you promise to uplift those in need, to respect your fellow human beings, to treat all fairly and to disagree with others honestly and respectfully through civil discourse and to support one another? Officers, answer, I do. I do. It is important that you and you, your members remember that upon the conduct of each depends on the fate of all. Now that you locally, your council, and globally our order. It is an enormous force for good and that the world needs us more than ever. You district deputy, state deputy, supreme officers are eager for your success and for the prosperity of your council. Never hesitate to ask for help. Study the official instructions you have received and take advantage of any leadership sources that are available. Where the council officer I accept your promise as given in good faith by Catholic gentlemen. Therefore, I shall now invest each of you with your medal of office, a symbol of the duties and responsibilities you accept as Knights of Columbus fraternal leader. I now ask you, your wife, to be escorted forward to join you for the investing ceremony where she will receive a token appreciation from your council. and the order. For the Deputy Grand Knight, Sir Frank Taylor, may you ever wear this Deputy Grand Knight medal proudly as to bring honor to yourself, your council, and the order.
of the Chancellor, Robert Murrieta, may you ever wear the Chancellor Medal, probably so to bring honor to yourself and the Council and their order. For the Financial Secretary, for Brother Bernie is not standing here for Brother Phil, but he's sick at home. So we're just going to do a honorary ceremony for Brother Phil. May you ever wear this Financial Secretary medal proudly so you can bring honor to yourself, your council, and the order. For the warden, Michael Horn, may you ever wear this warden medal proudly so I just to bring honor to yourself, your council, and the order. For the recorder, Steve Spain. May you ever wear this recorder medal proudly as to bring honor to yourself and cancel and the order. For the treasurer, Sir Knight Raymond of Brow, may you ever wear this treasure medal proudly so as to bring honor to yourself, your council, and the order. For the advocate, Samuel Shum. Sam is also away from town, so our brother George is going to receive it on his behalf. May you ever wear this advocate medal proudly so as to bring honor to yourself, your council, and the order. One year, George Horton. For the trustee, two years, Brian Kelly. For the trustee, three years, Burt Cologne. May each of you ever wear <coughs> this trustee medal proudly so as to bring honor to yourself. For the inside and outside guard, Eric Cobble and Michael Murrieta, may you ever wear this guard medal proudly to bring honor to yourself, cancel, and the order. For the district warden, please form the worthy officers. All right, you ready for this? Let's get in line, get in the center aisle, and form the living cross.
where the officers of Our Lady of the Desert, Council 15704, you now form a cross to remind you that first and foremost, you are a Catholic man, and as the Knights of Columbus member, you are ex uh, expected to live by the tenets of your faith and then put them in action through your fraternal leadership skills. As an officer, you need to hold yourself and even a higher standard. Your individual skills and leadership abilities, when combined with those of your fellow officers, will help your council to grow and expand its charitable reach. In doing so, your council will be able to help more people in need. The expansion of your charitable services projects is also an effective way for your council to continue grow and recruit and return, retain members. As the faces of those in need change, your council programs need to adapt to meet the new challenges of tomorrow. Your assigned district deputy, Sir Knight Benjamin Jimenez, district number four, stands ready to serve the officers and members of your council, so does Sir Knight Mark Hopin, field agent from the Russell Agency. And now, I declare that you are truly qualified and installed in your office and authorized to conduct the business of your council and are orders under such a time you have been lawfully succeeded. Now, having completed my task, I present to you your duly installed officers for the 2022-2023 fraternal year. Now I call upon worthy Grand Knight David Vanderlyn to come forward and announce the council calendar of events and what will happen after this ceremony. Worthy Grand Knight. Please be seated, we can uh, relax here. Worthy Chaplain, Father Peter, um, Pastor Ryan Johnson, our worthy district deputy who was so kind to fill in for our own district deputy, Ben Jimenez, who's back in Nashville attending the Supreme Convention. Um, to all my brother knights uh, and spouses, I don't think we have any other guests here. This is quite an honor to have been chosen to lead our council, along with quite a responsibility. It's a tough act to follow after serving under worthy Grand Knight Herb, who was an incredible leader. We got through uh, the last part of COVID under his leadership. He was a great mentor and, of course, uh, a brother in the truest sense of the word. So thank you, Herb, for all that you have done. And just listening to your schedule, we need to keep Herb in our prayers because boy, oh boy, uh, he's got a schedule, uh, keeping tabs of five councils here in the Tucson area. So even though we've not had our first council meeting of the year, that will start next Tuesday with our officers meeting. We've already had several meetings uh, with our program directors and leaders so that we can begin to get our program schedule in place for the year. Uh, we are increasing our leadership and bringing in some additional new brothers to help us. Uh, we're not going to go through that entire schedule because when I printed it the other day through December, it was about three pages long. So let's dispense with that today. Um, Tuesday night for the officers, we will for our last time, meet in the Desert House of Prayer, or as it's affectionately known by some of the staff here at the Renewal Center, the club, the hangout. Many other terms have been used. The clubhouse was the one that I heard most frequently. So we have been asked to vacate the premises next Wednesday morning. Uh, because they will be beginning the process of emptying the three buildings that uh, will start to undergo the renovation so that Redemptorist priests can uh, take up residence there at, at some point in the future. 
Um, we do not have confirmation that we will be moving into the uh, Alphonsus kitchen room, but it does appear that will be the case. But we have been given permission um, that we can use what we used to call the old sacristy when we held temporary mass over in the St. Alphonsus building. So we will be able to move all of our belongings into that storeroom where it can be put under lock and key so we don't have to transport things out of the storage room down off the library, which will be really nice. So beginning the following week, our uh, membership meeting will be uh, back over here on these grounds. Of course, a big event coming up and one that will allow us to fund most of our uh, donations during the year will be the Jim Click Raffle, the weekend of August 27 and 28. Uh, for the first time, uh, Jim Click is making available the car that will be raffled off for display purposes. So we hope to have that here for the 4 p.m. Mass on Saturday, and then it will be here all day on Sunday. So we'll also be a re doing a recruitment drive that same day. Um, hopefully we'll have a lot of folks around and uh, be willing to participate. We have a lot of programs going on already in September and October. Father Brian has been uh, very gracious in meeting with us and allowing us to proceed. Um, one of the things that we, we still need council approval on, but I'm quite sure that will be given, is we would like to again begin uh, monthly pancake breakfast. So we're again trying to build back our community after that uh, poor couple of years of COVID. So um, that's an important event uh, with that kickoff. And then we've also scheduled uh, the mass for our deceased brothers, which will be held on Saturday, November 4th. And at that time, we will invite uh, the wives of our deceased brothers and, of course, our entire council to participate in that Mass. So we won't go through the rest of the schedule. Um, at the conclusion of the event here, we do have a couple of photographs that we'd like to quick take while we are here in the church building. Uh, but other than that, we can proceed over to the dining room for lunch. One of the brothers will collect money over there. We'll see who draws that short straw, I guess, when we get there. Um, but lunch may not be available till probably close to noon. We'll see when uh, the chef gets it out. Uh, next Saturday morning at 10 a.m., uh, visitation begins and time with the family for Deacon Joe, who passed away recently, uh, his funeral is uh, taking place at 11 a.m. Uh, next Saturday morning here in the chapel. That's why we're doing this today. Um, with that, thanks again to our worthy chaplain, Father Peter, and our worthy district deputy. Um, again, just a few of you, uh, if you didn't get your picture taken, come up here to the altar and we'll quick do that. And again, thanks for coming today. Hope you enjoy your lunch. And uh, let's keep everyone in our prayers, especially those brothers that weren't able to be with us today. And uh, for all of us, as we lead our council into another new year. Thank you, brothers and guests and everyone. the chaplain as we close our official business of the day please invoke the blessing of our Lord upon these men who will serve as officers of the council and upon all here present who will be their close companions and in the great work of the Knights of Columbus Almighty God once again we call upon your name as Father Son and Holy Spirit Amen Worthy officers, as you now stand, you form a living cross. May this cross ever be a reminder to you that you must be renewed in Christ 
and that your administration must show that Catholic lay leadership among the people of God flows from this renewal. Invoking God's help to fulfill this mission, I will now impart to each of you his blessing. Holy Father, we thank you for the graces which you have bestowed upon us all. We thank you for the spirit of cooperation which has reigned here and for the inspiration which you have placed in the hearts of these men today. So we pray this, that you may find merit in the endeavors of our newly elected officers and brother knights of this council. We ask this in your son's name, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, worthy chaplain. I declare this installation of council officer ceremony complete. I hope you've all noticed the new uh, chasuble uh, <laughs> that the Knights of Columbus nice. purchased. Very nice. It's, it's light. Thank you, Father. Really nice. Thank you.